Hi everybody, T. Walton again. Last time I did a photography thing, it was on my, what I called the Poor Man's Miniature Studio. Since then I had a, a, a class, well not a class, but a presentation done by a lovely lady who talked about high key. I've never done high key before, but I thought I'd give it a try with what she had told me. So I set up that little studio to do a high key uh, photography set up and it worked out just great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through what I did, the setup once again, I'll show you the camera, how my settings were, and the end results. And I think you'll like it. I'm not a professional. Uh, I'm not even close to it. This was the first time for me, so there's a lot of you out there that just want to try new things. This would be a fun thing to try. And you can do it. You can do it. And you'll love the results. So I hope you enjoy this one, and maybe you too will do some high-key photography. High-key photography is a style of photography that uses unusually bright lighting to reduce or completely blow out the dark shadows in the image. So this is how I'm setting it up. If you watched my little miniature poor man studio video, it's the same studio setup. Uh, but this time I'm using the white background and I'm flooding the area with light. So I'll show you the camera settings and uh, how I took the photo. So on this shot, I'm using a Nikon uh, 105 millimeter lens. And I'm shooting it with the uh, Nikon D610 full frame camera. I'll show you the settings as we uh, as I take the first shot here on the settings I'm using a 1.6 second delay on the shutter and I'm going to an f13 and you can tell that the background is pretty well whited out so here we go we'll take a few shots and see how it develops Now I'm going to set up the shot with some grape hyacinth, add a little more color. So that's what it looks like from the camera. I'm going to a two second shutter speed and the F13. There it is from here. So here I'm going to shoot the hyacinth again. I'm, I use a shutter release so I don't move the camera. I also turn the vibration mode off of the camera so there's no movement inside. That when you're using shutter speeds like at two seconds or such, you want to make sure everything's stable. So let's shoot this one. And there it is. And I think I'm looking at the histogram and everything's over to the right, which means it's overexposed. In order to get this shot uh, proper, I needed to get more light on the grape hyacinth so then, because they're so dark. So what I did is I used the loom cube over here to reflect on the hyacinth to get some more light on them and uh, allowing the white light in the back to take up and create the high key. Here's a different one. I just ran out and picked some English daisies that were in the backyard. I'm at a 1.6 second shutter speed, a 13 F13. I'm at an ISO of 100 and my compensation is plus three. Okay, so I'll uh, snap this set up. You might see the alligator clip might get in the way, but I'll crop that out when I do the processing. Now we'll go with a little something different. We'll add different flowers in with the daffodil and uh, we'll change the position of the camera. Okay, so I'm moving it to the uh, two second exposure. I want to try to get those lines on the histogram. Yeah, that's where I want them, over here. See where that's at. And that's, that means I'm getting to the whites and eliminating a lot of the shadows. 
I've never done a key lighting photography before. This is my first time, or what they call high key photography. Um, obviously, if this doesn't work out, and when I process the pictures, they don't look good, you won't be seeing this video. But if they kind of turn out okay, you'll see the video. If it turns out okay, well, this wasn't a hard thing to do. Again, use white backgrounds, place your lights where you need your lights. You want to get your, your lights so that it dominates the photograph. This is for beginners. Uh, a true professional would probably show me a, a whole lot of stuff, but this could work out. So if you're not a professional and you just like to do different things, try this. It's fun. Well, that was my journey in key light photography. I'm a member of the Olympia Camera Club and learned about key light photography through a presenter named Lisa Langell, L-A-N-G-E-L-L. -L -L. You can Google her, go to her webpage. She is an expert on this particular type of photography. She gives tours, she does a whole lot of things. Um, she does presentations, so if you're in a camera club, you might get a hold of her. Maybe she'll do a Zoom presentation for you guys, too. Anyway, you don't have to do just flowers like I did. You can do all kinds of things. I've seen them done in, uh, with babies. They surround them with white sheets or white blankets and set the light right, and they, they're beautiful uh, photographs. You can also do it in foggy days. Foggy days will lend to nice key light photography or clouds that lends to nice uh, key light photography. All kinds of things you can experiment with. So if you're an amateur photographer like I am and you have a lot of rainy days like we do here in Washington, especially this time of year, instead of just sitting around, do something in your house. Set up like that studio I had. Uh, if you missed the last uh, YouTube that I showed how to build it, I'll put a link on this one so you can get to that one and see that. But anyway, you know, if it's raining, you can still take photographs. You can st still be creative and still enjoy it. So I hope you had a good one. Hope you learned something on this. Have a great day, and I'll see you the next time. Bye.